Ball nose end mills can be one of the trickiest milling tools to program correctly. With so much variety in surface conditions, stock removal, engaged diameter, and where on the ball nose the work is being done, it can be hard to know how to run a cutter like this correctly. This video from DAPRA will help you to understand how to program better speeds and feeds for your ball nose cutting tools. We'll focus this discussion specifically on two primary concepts, effective cutting diameter and chip thinning. Let's start with effective cutting diameter. When engaging a ball nose cutter in your workpiece material, you are rarely engaging the full diameter. You're most often working with a smaller, sometimes much smaller portion of the cutting tool. We call this the effective cutting diameter. Look at this diagram. You can see that the lighter the depth of cut, the smaller the effective cutting diameter will be. Because of this, we want to make sure that the RPM we're calculating for our CNC program is based on the ECD, not the actual outside diameter of the cutter. Now keep in mind that this example is for tip cutting. When surfacing over multiple areas of the ball nose, we'll make a different adjustment that we'll show you in just a bit. Here's a few examples of the ECD effect. When running a 3 quarter inch diameter ball nose end mill at 100 thousandths depth of cut, your effective cutting diameter is actually 510. When running that same 3 quarter ball nose at 50 thousandths depth of cut, your effective cutting diameter is only 374. And when running a 3 quarter diameter ball nose end mill at 15 thousandths depth of cut, your effective cutting diameter is only 210 thousandths. Now this is critical when calculating RPM, and failure to compensate for this could mean that you're running your ball nose cutter too slowly. If you're a regular user of ball nose end mills, you might be thinking, yes, but we're surfacing with ball nose tools. The depth of cut on the ball is all over the place. Fair enough, here are some general rules of thumb that you can use. When tip cutting, like shown on the red line here, determine the ECD using the actual depth of cut, as that is unlikely to vary by much, and the effect on the adjusted RPM and resulting cycle time will be significant. If your program will be executing a mixture of both tip and side milling, we generally suggest splitting the difference and figuring for cutting on a 45 degree, as shown on the red line here. Determine the ECD by either using about one quarter of the ball diameter for your depth of cut, or more simply, just multiply your actual ball nose diameter times 0.7. For example, if you have a one half inch diameter ball nose end mill that you will be surfacing with all over the ball, use an ECD of one half times 0.7, which equals 0.35. That will get you in a good range for most of your work, assuming you have a relatively even mix of tip and side milling on your workpiece. If your ball nose program is going to be doing mostly side milling, then you can generally just use one half of the ball for your depth of cut, which means you won't be adjusting much, if at all, for ECD in these cases. You'll use the actual outside diameter of the cutting tool. Here's a reference chart available on the resources page of DAPRA's website or from page 112 of our current printed catalog. If tip cutting, just match up the cutter diameter on the left of the chart with the depth of cut on the top of the chart and the intersecting number is your ECD. For example, take the 3 quarter diameter on the left, match it up with 15 thousandths depth of cut at the top, and you'll see that the ECD is 210 thousandths. That is the diameter you'd use when calculating the RPM for your milling program if you are tip cutting only. If you will be surfacing using much of the ball diameter, then your better bet is to multiply your ball nose diameter times 0.7 to get your ECD. We'll provide a link to this chart in the comments section below. How about chip thinning? Chip thinning literally means the thinning out of the chip depending on the entry angle of the cutting edge. The lower the entry angle is relative to the flat plane of the workpiece, the thinner the chip becomes. In our diagram here, we illustrate chip thinning at various depths of cut with a half inch ball nose end mill. The lighter the depth of cut, the lower the entry angle against the flat plane. 
The lower the entry angle, the thinner the chip becomes. At full depth, shown at the three o'clock position on the diagram, we see a 10,000th thickness of the chip, which corresponds to our programmed feed per tooth of 10 thousandths. Compare that to the 20 thousandths depth of cut, where the entry angle is much lower, and we see that the same feed per tooth only produces a 4 thousandths chip thickness. The lighter the depth of cut is, the higher the feed rate needs to be to bring the chip to the desired thickness. Let's see a few examples. When running a three-quarter ball nose at a quarter inch depth of cut, a feed per tooth of five thousandths yields an actual chip thickness of almost five thousandths. The feed rate and chip thickness are virtually identical. Lighten the depth of cut on that same three-quarter ball nose cutter to one hundred thousandths, and the five thousandths feed per tooth yields only a three and a half thousandths chip. Reduce it further to thirty thousandths depth of cut, and the 5 thousandths feed rate produces only about a 2 thousandths chip. And at a light finishing depth of cut of 10 thousandths, the 5 thousandths feed rate per tooth yields only about a 1 thousandths actual chip thickness. Now we need to compensate for this, or we'll be underfeeding the tool, reducing tool life, and more importantly, costing cycle time. Here's another reference chart this time showing the feed rate multiplier that should be used in order to create a desired chip thickness. If, for example, I'm looking to make a 3 thousandths chip when running a half inch diameter ball nose at 15 thousandths depth of cut, I can see from this chart that I need to use a 2.9 multiplier. That means I multiply 3 thousandths times 2.9 and get a necessary program feed rate of about 9 thousandths per tooth. This chart is also on the resources page of DAPER's website or on page 112 of our printed catalog. A link to this chart is also provided in the comments section below. So here's a rundown of the full calculation process. Identify your cutting tool diameter and determine a depth of cut using the guidelines we described. Find the effective cutting diameter using the ECD chart. Using the recommended SFM from your cutting tool catalog recommendations, calculate the RPM by multiplying the SFM from the catalog times 3.82, then divide by the ECD, not by the actual tool diameter. Then refer to the feed rate adjustment chart and multiply the desired feed per tooth times the adjustment or the feed rate multiplier. Then multiply the RPM times the adjusted feed rate and times the number of teeth in your cutter and you'll have a more optimized feed rate for your ball nose cutting tool. Now keep in mind that because ball nose applications can vary in depth of cut and stock removal, it's impossible to produce a perfect speed and feed for all situations within a 3D milling routine. But using these guidelines will help increase the productivity and tool life of your ball nose milling saving time and money. We'll finish with one more example. Let's say we have a one half inch diameter ball nose end mill with two flutes. We have a 3D finishing routine to execute that has 10 thousandths of stock to remove. Now this is a surfacing job, meaning our cutting will take place at various positions on our ball nose, not just tip cutting, not just side milling. Our cutting tool catalog gives us a speed and feed range of 600 SFM and 3 thousandths feet per tooth. First, we'll find our ECD by multiplying 1 half inch times 0.7 because we're surfacing with the ball nose, in other words, working on the tip and the side. That gives us an ECD of 350, which when plugged into our RPM calculation, gives us 6550 RPM. Next, we'll come up with our feed rate adjustment for chip thinning. To get a 3 thousandths chip, we match our ball nose diameter with our depth of cut and come up with a feed rate adjustment of 3.6. Multiplying 3 thousandths times 3.6, we will want to feed our ball nose at about 11 thousandths feet per tooth. So multiplying 6550 RPM times 11 thousandths feet per tooth, then multiplying times two teeth on the cutting tool, we end up with an adjusted feed rate of 144 inches per minute. There you have it. 
our basic guide to running better ball nose speeds and feeds. Now this obviously wasn't all inclusive of the possible unusual situations that you can run into with this type of cutting tool. But practical application of these simple adjustments will go a long way towards improving your productivity on any surface milling program. Want more information? Contact us and speak with one of our application specialists at 800-243-3344 or info at depra.com. Thanks for watching.